It's a fate almost worse than death. A teenager trapped behind bars for a cold-blooded crime he says he didn't commit. Jesse Barnes lived that nightmare for more than 40 years, accused of murdering his 15-year-old girlfriend, Cynthia Vaughn. Cynthia was stabbed to death and bled to death uh, from multiple stab wounds. And once she was found on that very dark night in the Cherry Hill section of Baltimore, Maryland, police had tough questions for Jesse. Did you kill Cynthia? No, ma'am. He was asked that question again and again. And even though Jesse pleaded not guilty to first degree murder, he did confess, plunging him into a murky and never ending legal mess. And there was nothing ever corroborating any aspect of the confession that Jesse signed, which is a huge red flag. In fact, his case seems rife with red flags. Jesse says he was actually at a party. Several of his friends could have vouched for him. I had the alibis, and whatnot, but they was never called. And no witnesses saw Jesse with Cynthia that night. Even more stunning, Jesse's confession says he killed her in an area away from where the murder actually took place. I was taken down to the pool where the police had directed me where the body was found. And they asked me to point. I pointed one place, and the police said, no, that's not the spot. The spot is over here. Even though Jesse confessed to killing Cynthia by the pool, the evidence showed she was killed 400 yards away by a riverbed. You had said that there was a struggle and a rape near the pool. Is that what happened? No, ma'am. That was just a fabricated statement. Why would you lie about that? Because I was trying to give the police any kind of statement to keep them off of me. Jesse's attorneys told us that when investigators came out here to the pool, they found no signs of a physical struggle, no DNA, not even a drop of blood. He couldn't lead police to new or missing evidence. The existing evidence didn't corroborate his confession statement. In fact, it contradicted it. But if Jesse was innocent, why would he confess to the murder? I had no choice. Individuals falsely confess when they feel hopeless, that there's no way out, when their spirit is broken, and they feel like the only way to escape the situation is by confessing. By all accounts, Jesse endured a grueling, almost 32-hour interrogation, saying police threatened him with bodily injury, manhandling him near a third floor window, his friends also brought in for questioning. We heard uh, someone says, uh, if you don't confess, that we're going to throw you out this window. As they brought Jesse out, Jesse was crying. He, has, he was handcuffed. Jesse may have been the perfect target with an IQ far below average. That he had a borderline IQ, meaning he had an IQ in the 60 to 70 range, puts him at greater risk for making or agreeing to a false confession. I was already crying because they were telling they told me that she had murdered. I don't understand why somebody would why somebody would do such a thing to her. After hours and hours of aggressive questioning, Jesse said he wasn't thinking, but he was talking. I was hysterical when they started showing me different pictures of her. They kept pressuring Jesse to come up with a story, to try to explain what happened. Jesse wanted to get out of there. They said to Jesse, just tell us what happened and you can go home. All they wanted to do was just get me because I was a boyfriend. I said that I held the legs and we dragged her down to the swimming pool. Jesse was charged with murder. His friends and even Cynthia's mother were stunned. She did not believe Jesse killed her daughter. And no one in Cherry Hill believed Jesse did this? No. Nobody. Cynthia's brother couldn't imagine he was even capable of killing. But my mother, my grandmother said, no way Jesse couldn't have did it. It's just it's not his mentality. He was too kind-hearted, too giving, too caring. Cynthia's family was so convinced Jesse was innocent, they hired an attorney to represent him. It doesn't add up. Jesse shouldn't have been locked up in the first place for this. Jesse got a speedy trial. The entire trial was basically a day and a half. But defense experts say not necessarily a thorough one. His attorney, unfortunately, 
didn't do a proper investigation, had a lot of evidence at his disposal to show that Jesse didn't do this. His lawyer barely even put on a defense at all. You were never, never. notified to come never. to court and you were the alibi. Yeah, never. Jesse was with you that night. Yes. And yet, Jesse was pronounced guilty. He was just 17 years old. What was that moment like for you? It broke my heart, because I, <laughs> when the judge gave me a life sentence, and I told the judge, I said, Your Honor, I said, how can I do a life sentence? He told me, day for day. Jesse ended up serving more than 14,000 days, almost 40 long years in prison, all while proclaiming his innocence and filing appeals. I wrote to judges and different uh, public defenders. I ain't got nothing. They kept denying me, denying me. But he never lost hope, and some of it came in the form of a woman named Mabel, who stood by him as the days turned into decades. The system let me down deeply. Put me through all that. Coming up next, if Jesse finds justice, I'm still praying. Will Cynthia's murder ever be solved? I don't think there's any doubt that Cornelius Monroe killed his stepdaughter.